It's Colt Day at Lane Leverage Stables at Saddlecrest, and I am sitting here with three breeders that uh, I think they've won just about everything can be won. Bobby Jones, Dr. Richards, and Jerry Stevens. And uh, I just want to know, how, I know that y'all partner up on a lot of different horses and colts, so who decides who's going to do the leading? Well, Doc usually decides that. Doc decides yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. At the end, he's the one who makes the final decision on the leading. On the leading part. Now, who, Bobby does the right. I have never seen him on a horse. Well, he decides who's going to ride him. Oh, he decides who's going to ride him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, Jerry, who helps you? Anybody? Yeah, a little guy that lives on the farm. His name is Ernie Sparrow. And he, he's the one that decides who's going to do the... No, he don't decide. He does all the work. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he, he gets to do the haying and the feeding. Yeah, and, and, the, and, and, and he breaks them when they're small. He gets in the stall with them, blows in their nose, pets them, gets a holder on them, and gets them going around and around in the stable. And then you bring them to a trainer. Yes, sir. Yeah. That, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good deal there. Well, Bobby, I'm going to start with you. What got you into horses? Well, my dad-in-law, he passed away, and everybody kind of lost interest, and, and I just kind of bred two or three of his old mares, and that started. He just kept going. So, does Frida ever help you out or give you any pointers? Well, she gives me pointers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart move right there, Bobby. <laughs> well, Doc, what about you? I know you're a veterinarian. Well, uh, my deal was, uh, Growing up on a farm, uh, loving the horses, uh, loved to compete and show. It started in 62, and I can't get away from it, and it probably won't. I understand that. But uh, I, I used to show against all the legends, Beach, Buddy Moore, Albert Lee Rowland, and I'd go in there and and get the gate every time. <laughs> it's hard to beat those fellas back in that day. But, but got, you got educated. Got educated and got experience and, and, and could halfway pick out a good horse uh, in the ring and as a yearling of what's going to win and, and go from there. And it's, it's kind of been fun doing all that. What about you, Jerry? Well, I'm from Salina, Tennessee, and we didn't have horses. We had mules. And I know what it's like to follow a turning plow all day. But the same person got me in the horse business, he did Bobby. Uh, I married to Pete's wife, Margaret's uh, sister, Linda Sue, and I worked for him one summer picking up stumps out of an 80-acre field. And I said, I don't want money, I want a horse. So he gave me Midnight Cindy. And I bred her to triple threat. She had a filly. I kept the filly, started from there breeding her, and been breeding ever since 67. And I've wow. had a couple of good ones. Well, you brought up something about the mules. Yeah. I'm, I'm educated on a mule. Oh, really? Okay. My daddy make, used to make me ride a mule out of the woods. Yeah. Hauling a log, you know, pulling a log. Pulling a log, yeah. That's when I found out I didn't want to ride no mule. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to ride a horse. You wanted a Cadillac, didn't you? <laughs> I wanted something better than that mule. Yeah. Oh, that mule hurt. Yeah. But now, I, I can understand that. Yeah. But, but there's a lot. There's a lot of great walking mules today, too. But oh, yeah. I love that walking horse. It's kind of hard to, uh, kind of hard to get away from it. Now, how many world champions have you had? I know a bunch, because we have advertised a ton of them for you. I have no idea, really. Well, I, yeah, I know I've been it. lucky. I've been lucky. I have some pretty good mares, and I've been lucky. Well, I can remember one year that you had 11 world championships and world grand championships. That's combined 11, because we ran 11 mads for you. I remember yeah. that I've only done that for one other horse, one other person, and that was drop the hammer. So I, I keep up with totals like that, cause oh, and you you was in there too, cause I know y'all partner on a lot of and those. And I I saw drop the hammer and named him. Uh, he was, was Sun Drop. Is that right? He, he was a good horse. He's a, uh, went through a sale up here in Kentucky after a Christmas sale. He's a nice horse. But he, he won a bunch of ribbons. Oh, he? man, he, that one year he was winning. And your Western Plantation Pleasure Rocket Horses Light Shot World Grand Champion for 2008. His entry number is 1109. Drop the Hammer. Connie Waldo is your exhibitor for Waldo and Leeds of Cedar Creek, Texas, and Shelbyville. Drop the Hammer and Connie Waldo.
drops the hammer and Connie Waldo. Coming out of the south turn, it's Happy Trails to Connie Waldo and drop the hammer. Your Western Plantation Place, your light shot, program champion for 2008. The Waldo and Lee get to Cedar Creek, Texas and Shelbyville. I remember a guy come running up through there and he said, I'm breeding my mare to that horse. I said, I got a hunter that says you don't. <laughs> he was a gilded. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody everybody loved that horse. Yeah. But I've seen some some years now. Years yeah, now. I've been very lucky. Me and Doc shows a lot of coats and I've done good with halter coats. They say halter coats don't make, but hey, good looking. We hey. undefeated for three years and yeah. won the halter class. So I know it. it. So yeah. we've done good with I think, and this is my opinion, a horse leaves the halter class and it goes to a trainer. You know as well as I do, some trainers get along better with this horse than that horse. And a lot of times, that first step to me is what gets it done yeah, one way or the other. If you go by percentage, they're probably a better percentage of lead lines make than other way because there ain't many lead line coats. That's fact. Did you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not a fair question. It's not, it's not a fair assumption that, that it's this way or that way, but because I've seen a lot, especially y'all's, that that made it and done very well. Yeah. Pocahontas was a holder coat. Yeah. And I mean, you knock, can't. And knock at her. You can't knock that that one mare that you just. I mean, she's great. Now reverse, please. Second in the class is 482, me and Pocahontas. Chris Richards for Jones and Richards of Bellbuckle. Chris Richards and me and Pocahontas, 482 is second. Uh, when the minute that we saw her, before we saw her, I said, told Bobby, I said, that's an age mare, Lee. And she went on to win Columbia. First time to move into the class, step on her four to five feet in Pope of Mahomes. We did a lot of those five to four to five feet in the class. We did a lot of those five to four to five feet in the That, that's what matters a lot yeah. of times is the, is the way the way the mare or the or the stud is trained and the way it goes on because some of them will reach a certain spot and they never go any further. 
Let me and see. some of them step over. Let me tell you about her. She was right here in this ring, and she had super talent. In the beginning, she would be high left and then high right, and we were we knew we had something, but we just wanted her to be level and, and, and keep riding her and keep riding her. First thing you know, she's dead level and doing more. And the B division of two-year-old walking mares will ask the Blue Ribbon winner to ride to your right, please, and then on the west side to claim your award. First time the Blue Ribbon go to entry number 489, me and po Pocahontas. They're wearing the number 511, but in the program list it is 489. Tyler Bonkham rides for Allison Armstrong of Hickory, North Carolina. Me and Pocahontas, but Tyler Bonkham riding to the blue. All right, let's take a look. Headed down victory lane, our B division winner and two-year-old walking mares. Here's me and Pocahontas. Tyler Malka makes the good ride for Allison Armstrong of Hickory, North Carolina. Me and Pocahontas with Tyler Malka. Congratulations. So you got to give them Colts a fair chance. You know, they all start out just great. You got to, got to train them. And she was easily trained. And, and uh, you remember her sitting right here in this ring watching. Right. Absolutely. Well, it takes time. Yeah. A lot of times with Colts. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, I mean, just look at some of our World Grand Champions. Never really reached their peak to where they Later were really on. getting it done. Yeah. Mountain Man is just one of them. So that's a good. Hey, one. by the way, he. You know he's a master breeder of 2021, 20, Bobby. Bobby, I know. I've seen that. Yeah. Congratulations. And, and guess Thank what? We named, we named one of his coaches this year. He's born in 21. They named him master breeder of 2021. And if we'll either be sorry or he'd be great. <laughs> That's it. But the name ain't going to do it, is it? Well, now, Jerry, I know you. I see your name on a lot of young coats. Yeah. Two-year-olds. So, do, do you ever get into the lead line, or are you strictly? I used to show Wayne's quite a bit. I was in a, a war race, and uh, Generator's Melody. Tommy Wilson uh, walked up, and uh, was it Tommy Wilson that used to show for Dr. Miller? I believe I believe you're right. So I don't want to swear to I it. I won that class, and he walked up the gate and said, I'll give you $8,500 for that coat. That was a lot of money for me, so I sold it. It went ahead, and it won a, a world champion. And its full sister, Generating Music, went ahead and won it. And Generators Terminator 2 was a world champion. And uh, out of the same mama. And then the finishing touch was out of the same mama. And then lately, the Big Bad Wolf, uh, uh, I didn't own it then. I sold it as a, as a yearling. And uh, Lady Wolf, I'm Lady Wolf. And uh, I've had a little luck. Yeah, well, Lady Wilson. Good, good hey, he's a wolf man, Jack. You know? that, that's it. That's it. I remember him. He was a, a, a what do you call him? A disc jockey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Well, there's one thing I found out about you. Jerry will run a class, and I say I need to get with him see if he won't run a victory pass. And by the time you get to him, he's already sold the horse. I mean, he's bad about that. I believe he gets them sold before they come out of the ring. No, I'm not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. Yeah. He, he knows how to handle it, though. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> well, I, I know what he said a while ago. They asked him how much for the coat, yeah. and what was the first thing out of his mouth? Which way? He, he ain't ready to sell right. yet. Yeah, yeah. And that was the wolf coat. Yeah. That was one he said he wasn't the, ready to the sell yet. The big bad wolf. The big bad yeah, wolf. Yeah. So when he wins that two-year-old class, then, then that's him. when he'll be sitting up there, wait, wait for all of them to come in, right? <laughs> Yeah, and I just sold a gin sling blade this year. That's, that's pretty nice of us. Well, you sold one back, I believe it was the last show at the at the Cal Sonic before the celebration. That was gin sling blade. Okay. Yeah, okay. this year. Yeah. I knew I knew you'd yeah. sold Mr. one. Got it. Well, they these horses, a lot of people buy, sell, buy, sell. But I'm going to tell you all a story about Don Collins. Don had a went over to Jerry Williams one day and he seen a filly. I want to see if any of y'all have ever done this. He seen this filly and he really liked the filly. So he bought her. Then he moved her. 
ended up culling her. Well, the filly made the rounds and ended back up at Jerry Williams again. Don was over there one day and he saw the filly and he said, boy, I really like that filly, but I want to buy her. So he bought her the second time. Now, my question is this, have any of y'all ever done that? No, but I can understand that. <laughs> They change a lot. They do. They, they change a whole lot. It's good for the industry. They buy a lot. And they show. They do. And they're quality. He is what he is. But we need those people. And Lucky is such a lover and rider. Of oh, she loves to ride. Yeah. I mean, if she's in the ring, she is happy. Yeah. And if she's in the ring, Don's happy. Yeah. Those are people that really have. make the industry because they don't win every class. But they'll sure go in every class. They're kind of like Sister Millie. Yeah. Sister. That woman would show in the stick horse class if they would allow her to do it. How many yeah, horses right. has she shown this year? In a, a Fifteen or so. Hey, I have no. I know it's a ton of different ones in every class. No, she. Every time you look up and, and she done flat shot perform, she don't care yeah. if she's in a saddle, and she's always. Have you ever seen her in the ring that she didn't have that smile she's over? She's always smiling. Yeah. Always yeah. smiling. And you can go through them. Robert Dorch, he's always smiling. Uh, Molly Walters, Debbie Eichel. I, I could keep Janie, going. Janie Chapman. Too. Janie Chapman. All yeah. of them, they, they, they're happy. Now, yeah. Janie gets a serious look every now and yeah. then. Yeah. She's, Especially when she's in there with some real she's good She's competitive, and she's got a lot of sportsmanship about her, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's one thing a, a lot, that there's a lot of sportsmanship in this industry. A lot of great people that they they love the horses, they love what they're doing. They want to beat them, but they they realize that the other people have got a good horse, and they just have to try to beat them. That's it. I mean that that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Is it Janice Foster? Is that her name? Janice. Janice Foster. And you talk about a good rider, and she can enjoy it. You can just tell by watching her. She loves what she's doing. Oh yeah. She, he she raised fearless. Too. He raised fearless. I that raised fearless. Right? Yeah. Hey, that's. Billy. Yeah, she is. he is. I mean, he. I'm just that Billy's a little stud. Yeah, yeah. But hey, yeah. I mean, it. I would imagine if you started counting all the horses that you three have had a finger on somewhere, we we may be up to 15, 20 percent of the industry. You think? Maybe more. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Which horse has won more blue ribbons celebration than any other horse? If I'm not mistaken, Hill's Perfection. I don't know about that. Who do you think? Fire and Ice. Well, Fire and Ice, that's true. 40, Fire and Ice. 40 something, 42. Think about that. And he was a halter call, a point. Was he a stud or guilty? No, he was guilty. Yeah. yeah. But I, I had him as a stud for Mr. Crow. And he was a great halter. So, He's a fantastic so, horse. And, and it just. Through the years, I mean, every, every, Russ and, and uh, they all rode him, you know. And that's something that comes out here when that many blue ribbons. Well, I know Hill's Perfection won he a lot of fire and ice he too. We might check on that. I don't know how you check that. I, I, that would be a that that would be a good trivia question yeah. to know yeah. because it it. Some horses have just they they just keep going, keep, keep going, going the same good late and they get in their sound and. Don't have to worry about anything like that. And right now, we if you really look, we've got some fantastic mares this year. I mean, good ones, and, and one of them, Extra Special Jose. First time, First time Blue Ribbon, Ribbon, Ribbon Entry 1233, Extra Special Jose. Casey Wright makes the good ride for Sandy and Gail Cagle of Lexington. Casey Wright and Extra Special Jose, our four-year-old mares and gildings winner tonight. It's a Blue it's Ribbon, Ribbon salute Ribbon tonight, tonight for our four-year-old four Bears and Gildings world, world champion. champion. Here's Extra it's Special Jose. Jose. Casey Wright makes the Blue Ribbon ride for Sammy and Gail Cagle of Lexington. Casey Wright makes Extra Special Jose. Uh, proudly sporting their celebration Blue Ribbon tonight. Tonight we welcome to the winner's circle entry 611, Extra Special Jose and Emma Wright. Sammy and Gail Cagle and Emma Wright on the Friday night, Spotlight Ride. They were winners.
this class in 2019 and in 2020, making it three years in a row, playing the World Grand Championship title in the division. They've had wins this year at the Christmas in July show and took home a World Championship last week in our U2 to 11 year old mayor class. With this win tonight, the team of extra special Jose and Emma Wright have remained undefeated in the past three years. Extra special Jose, extra special and Emma Wright no doubt fired by Jose Jose and out of an extra cash fair. Congratulations. Emma, you know the drill. I wasn't up here for a long time. You've also earned a place in our Stars of the Future showcase tomorrow night after Class 178. But here on Friday night, we celebrate with you an extra special achievement winning the class three years in a row. It's extra special Jose. Emma Wright makes the good ride. Sammy and Gail Cagle and Emma Wright of Lexington and Regan, Tennessee. Extra special Jose and Emma Wright of Friday night championship ride here in the Big Oval. Congratulations. Yeah. I, l I love yeah. that mare because Casey rides that mare. The young ones ride her. The kids ride her. She's the same mare. She's limitless as Ada. Pocahontas, you named a few yeah. minutes ago. We've just, we're, we're fortunate that we've got that kind of mare. So now I'm going to ask the number one question before we, we stop. Okay. Each one of your breeders, what do you think carries the most weight, the mare or the stud? Without a doubt, the mare. I'd say 75% of the mare. Uh, you got to have both, but the mare spreads her lineage out a little bit more, and you're bringing it together for the foal. And sometimes that, that mare you kept for a brood mare got extra special lineage that you kept. And then you take the stud that's not well known or, and, and got the it takes both but that mare is so important you can you can take that mare and breed her three or four different studs and get a good coat definitely the mare 75 well i can tell you what lewis hawker smith told me one time he said if you don't have good mares you spin in your wheels <laughs> and that that and to to prove what y'all said when the industry was facing the downfall. Nobody was breeding. Not in the, like they were. Right. Yeah. Everybody started doing one thing. They started picking the, the best, best mares. And limit their breeding. And limited their breeding. They got better and stuff. right here is an example going around right now on what that led to, in my opinion. I'll tell you another thing, too. You cannot start horses and the fillies that don't make keep them from brood mares. No. You've got to keep the ones that will sell. Uh, two of my mares, I was offered 40000 for one, and a, a young mare, and I brought her home for a, for a brood mare. Uh, I was offered 40000 for another, and I carried her home. So there's a lot of work in, in brood mares. And if you don't have to keep the bed for a brood mare, you spin in your wheels. I, I believe Debbie Eichler just purchased a filly from me and I love the filly but she wanted her and she said this because I never thought Frank would buy another horse and she told Frank she said if she don't make she'll make a great brood mare and that's a fact because the horse was good yeah. but I, I agree with what y'all saying it, yeah. to me it's the mare you know many years ago Pride Secret Threat when Billy Gray had those big sales right about everybody would just take a mare Whatever she did, if she wasn't worth a dime and breed, get five, six, seven, eight thousand for it. Right. But that, that she, day's Those up, days are gone. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. They're not going to be here no more. Well, I tell you what, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate this. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching this myself. I might learn something about it. <laughs> and I'm going to ask Frieda if she won't give me a couple of points. <laughs>